Hello, hi everyone. Good morning. Um, I'm just going to wait for a minute or two just for me to make sure that I am online and I'm live and because I'm here after a very, very long time, I'm hoping that, uh, oh yes, I can see Jay is there. Uh, Jay, you can hear me, can't you? Because I've not been here for a long time, just making sure that everyone can hear me and I can start also accordingly. Uh, first of all, um, good, how can I say, happy Sunday from my side over here. It is London, uh, 10 a.m. approximately UK time. And uh, thank you, Jay. Thanks a lot for that. Um, and um, yes, I'm here after a very long time and I have been away for all these weeks and months. And it was for a reason and probably very soon all of you will get to know what that reason was. It, it hasn't been the best but i guess you know it's live things happen so anyway so here i am after a very long time to do this particular chat that i'm sure you would have seen the post for which said you know um three essential pillars for optimal health and long life the reason why i thought i would turn that post into a live chat also is because i was teaching all of last week and i was doing the third module of the diet and lifestyle consultant course a course that i run and um uh, one of the students asked asked me oh can you please remind me what the three pillars are and from that it led into a conversation and i realized that it's not just for practitioners or consultants but understanding these three essential pillars even for general public people is so important because it is something that we tend to ignore tend not to give importance to or literally you know put it aside that means we don't really prioritize these three important essential pillars according to ayurveda but the beauty of these three important essential pillars is that it does not involve definite taking ayurvedic herbs or doing ayurvedic oil massages or doing ayurvedic dinacharya in a way and it is not directly related to that yet these three essential pillars are Ayurvedic. It is something that anyone and everyone can follow in their everyday routine or lifestyle. So based on the post that you may have seen, you, you already know what these three essential pillars are. These are, of course, first of all is sleep, then is bowel movements, that is stool elimination. And the third one is everyday physical activity or exercise. I know when I actually say it, it comes across that, oh, yes, I know what she means. I don't need to listen to this live chat. And yes, I'll make sure that I sleep enough or I uh, like, you know, empty my bowels every day or do some exercise every day. So it's just not about basic ticking a box that I've done it, but really understanding the reason behind it and why these three aspects of everyday life are so important, not only to, of course, help prevent illnesses and diseases, but even if someone were to be suffering from certain illnesses and conditions why these three are important so before i go on to explain each of those that is sleep then a stool elimination and then everyday kind of you know, physical activity or exercise uh this is for you to take away and think about do you know that the three things which are these where at the end of it people actually say you know what i feel good or they feel light they feel happy they feel kind of you know that quality of you know bounce in life people may not be able to directly connect to it but the but these three important things actually are sleep then is passing of stools that means emptying your bowels and exercising you may have seen that everyone says oh if you have not been well you should be sleeping or yes you need to go exercise or something like that but these are the three things that at the end of which we all say we feel good so go away and think about it that the days that you have not really slept well at night, next day we always feel a bit irritable, a bit anxious, a bit impatient. Or if you've been just sat in one place, not doing anything, you've been sedentary, once again that leads to that lethargy, that heaviness, that tiredness. Or again, a lot of people, of, this is mostly for people in a way who are aware that, you know, they have not passed stools or emptied their bowels. Even they say, you know what, I don't feel good today because I have not gone to the toilet today. So do bear in mind, even if it may not be related to health or even if someone is generally healthy, yet these are the three aspects of everyday life that affect us the most and that is sleep, bowel movements and exercises. So whenever you have got these three things in place, 
you will automatically say, you know what? I feel great today. I feel good. I feel like I can do much more than it would have been on other days. So these are the three things to focus on. Now coming back to why these three aspects or pillars are so essential. Now this is, I'm sure all my students who are joining and they all know that I always talk about whenever in doubt. So this is for all those consultants, practitioners out there listening to this live chat. Do remember whenever in doubt, go back to these three very practical suggestions or applications. And that is good sleep everyday bowel movements and of course you know enough exercising or physical activity on a daily basis so whenever in doubt just go back to these three aspects so first of all looking into sleep of course we do say that sleep is very important and whenever I talk about sleep as being one of those important aspects it's not just from the point of view of oh yes I have had eight hours of sleep every day actually that is not the most important thing yes eight hours is important but when you go to sleep is so, so, so essential. And it is for a reason why people say, yes, you need to be in bed for 10 p.m. or at the most 10.30 and, or it is only on rare occasions, maybe 11 o'clock. But going to sleep at 11 p.m. every night is not good for the body. So, yes, on weekends, if you're going out and if it has happened to be that you've been out until, and I know I do that, sometimes you're out until 11 p.m. midnight and yes, you do come back a bit late. So, yes, once in a while, that is okay. But on a more regular basis, 10 p.m. is important. So do write it down. If you want to live a long life, if you want to look young and healthy on a more kind of long-term basis, and if you want to get rid of all your illnesses and diseases, especially for those people who are hesitant to take any other, like, you know, this is, I talk from my own experience because not everyone is ready to take Ayurvedic supplements or anything else, which they are a bit worried where people say, you know what, I have high blood pressure, I have got liver failure, I'm on steroids and I'm a bit hesitant to take turmeric or take thrifla. So whenever that is the case, put everything aside and ask your clients or even for yourselves, main thing is going to sleep on time and that is at 10 p.m. Now, why is this 10 p.m. time so important and why do I stress so much on it? The beauty about Ayurveda is that I'm sure you all may know, especially if you follow Ayurveda, that not only our lives, but even every day is divided out into these three doshas, you know, like Vata time of the day, Pitta time of the day and Kapha times of the day. But the beauty of Ayurveda is that it's not just about dividing out times into these doshas, but times are even more now intri intricately divided out into organ times, meaning there are certain times of the day when your liver becomes more active. There are certain times of the day when your heart becomes more active. There are certain times of the day when your brain is more active, meaning, you know, it is their time to work. It's like shift system, you know. So having been in medical profession and having worked in hospitals, we have these shifts of systems like, you know, 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. or 8 p.m. to 8 a.m. So we need to be quite focused when I'm working during that time. Likewise, even our bodies, there are certain times of the days where certain organs are becoming more focused on their work. And now this is where 10 p.m. is so important because come around approximately 10 p.m. or around that time at night, of course, we say Pitta time begins, but more importantly, it is also liver as an organ starts becoming more active. It starts putting all its focus on whatever food that you would have eaten, uh, or let's say around 6, 7 p.m. It takes at least two, three hours for that food to go through the digestive tract, because, get digested over there. And after that, the liver becomes more active. And now what Ayurveda says is that while your liver is working and active and liver is like your fire organ. So while that fire is strong and quite active, we as individuals, we need to be in bed sleeping because in that way the body temperature are the way we think you know our mind our emotions they all need to be at this minimum metabolic rate so that the liver can start functioning so you have to understand imagine your liver is trying to work it is acting it is becoming hot strong and doing its metabolic processes but at the same time on the other side even if you are going to be active there are two fires working together because when we are physically active the how can I say the metabolism in the body does become high and the body starts uh, spending more energy and that is not good and therefore when the liver times 
time arrives, we need to be in bed, at least sedentary in bed. Even though you may not be able to go to sleep directly, maybe you're reading a book. Do bear in mind, read a book. I know I've got my phone over there in front of me, but not on your phones, not on your laptops, because the radiation of that also increases heat in the body. So yes, go get into bed at 10 p.m. or try to get to sleep for 10 p.m. Because when we are sleeping, when the uh, liver organ becomes active, then it can work the way it needs to work. So do bear in mind, if you are awake and your liver is awake, yes, you may go to sleep at 12 a.m., 1 a.m. And you may say that, yes, I have woke, I've slept eight hours, but those eight hours of sleep starting 12 or 1 a.m. is not good because the body had already become hot. And do write it down if you've got pen and paper ready that in today's environment, one of the most important imbalances that are happening anywhere and everywhere are dry heat or inflammation in the body. So when we talk about dry heat and inflammation, that is literally around us and within us. And it is no wonder that nowadays so many of us uh, suffer from pitta related illnesses and diseases because it's like, you know, heat on heat that is taking place all the time. And I do understand the way our times are going. Of course, we are, in, we are in the age of Kalyuk and the whole pandemic did not really help with that because it has actually uh, accelerated that whole heat related environment. So forget the whole world. It does not matter what is happening around you. Focus on yourself. If you're looking to heal yourself faster compared to anyone else or whatever anyone else says, focus on your sleep. Eight hours of sleep starting from 10 p.m. And this is where I tell all my students and my clients, it's like, humor me, try it for eight days, 10 days. I understand that first two or three days may be difficult to go to sleep at 10 p.m. But the more you discipline your body, the more you put that kind of uh, routine to your body, yes, you will fall asleep at 10 p.m. That means when you wake up in the morning, you're going to be feeling quite refreshed. All that excess heat from the body has been removed, but the liver also then knew how to work. So this bit about going to sleep at 10 p.m. at night is, again, very, very important for people who suffer from all inflammatory conditions. So when I talk about inflammatory conditions, these can be even things like multiple sclerosis, your rheumatoid arthritis, or even conditions like high blood pressure, or migraines, headaches, gastric ulcers, duodenal ulcers. So any heat-related imbalances, please make sure that you go to sleep at 10 p.m. at night. So that means... Anyone with pitta illnesses, it is fo uh, focuses on sleep, but 10 p.m. So do bear in mind, even if you were to say, oh, I go to sleep at 12 a.m., but I wake up at 8 or 9 a.m. in the morning, that will not help. Go to bed at 10 p.m. Try it. Do it at least for four days in a week. If not four days, at least try it for three days in a week. If not that, at least one day a week. Because in that way, you are able to build up on that. And the more the body gets used to it, you will see those changes. So first thing is sleep. But do bear in mind, when we go to sleep at 10 p.m., wake up at 6 a.m., of course, that is an Ayurvedic kind of, you know, our, uh, we say Ratri Charya, that is your nightly routine. That actually also helps to produce certain, if you want to call it happy hormones, that is endorphins. And the more these endorphins are being produced in the body, the more they work towards that anti-inflammatory, anti but healing processes so that's the first thing about sleep and i'm sure people who have not heard me talk for a long time probably memories are coming back oh she talks really fast but yeah when i get excited this is who i am okay so that's the first thing about sleep second very very important thing is stool elimination bowel movements i know it is one of those topics that people do not like to talk about but where i come from I can very happily talk about it for hours and hours because if you would have watched any of my uh, previous live chats, you would have seen, I have, I have said it over there, that um, uh, someone has said that you love my yoga sessions during COVID. Thank you. Probably I'll go back to doing some more online uh, yoga lessons. We never know. Okay, so coming back to bowel movements, if you have got pen and paper ready, please write it down that approximately 80 to 85 percent of i do mean it all illnesses and diseases literally anything and everything all illnesses and diseases approximately 80 to 85 percent of them actually start because of irregular bowel movements that means things like constipation 
or uh, irregular kind of stool elimination or anything that may also include <clears throat> gases, flatulence, sometimes it might even then be uh, with, you know, like piles, hemorrhoids, any of that. All of those kind of, you know, tendencies of bowel movements actually lead to 85% of illnesses and diseases. So imagine in a way, your health is in your hands or your health, and I'm going to go walk back a bit, is in your gut, literally over there. If you focus on regular bowel movements, stool elimination, I promise you, I don't even say, oh, let's see how it goes or hopefully it will help. I use the word, I promise you, you will see that you can get rid of at least 50% of the intensity of illnesses and diseases just by regulating your bowel movements. Now, when I say going to the toilet every day, yes, people, so I do, when I do consultations, people do say, yes, I go to the toilet regularly, but if it is once every other day, that means once every two days, that is not good because according to Ayurveda, that is still constipation. So that does not help because what is it? Stools are nothing but the waste products that the body has put aside saying, you know what? I've gone through all the metabolic processes and these are the things that my body doesn't need. The best way I can explain this, and I'm sorry it might sound a bit crazy, is let's say you are in your home and every, you know, because we cook, we clean, rubbish is being collected. And if, if you've got your rubbish bin, yes, you know, you've got your bin bag in there, you have put all the rubbish in there and probably once every two days, once, once a day or whatever, depending upon your family size, you are emptying that rubbish out. But imagine that a rubbish bin is full. And if you have not emptied out, more rubbish is being collected and probably putting it around that rubbish bin, which is outside. And when that happens, the most common thing is that because of that, sorry to make it sound really horrible, but this is the best example I can give you why everyday stool elimination is so important. The rubbish that you put outside, then later on it starts smelling. It affects the environment of your house. Every time you enter into your house, if that stale rubbish is still there, you can feel it, the environment in the house changes, the air in the house changes. That is exactly what is happening to our body. Rather than just every, like, no, uh, eliminating stools every day, that means everything is being pushed out. If you don't go to the toilet every day, rather than just being over there in the colon, the effect of that, literally these are toxins, rather than just being over there, then through blood circulation, do bear in mind, because even from the colon, there is some kind of absorption that takes place back into the system. That means all the toxins now are being absorbed back into the body. They might go to your joints, to your bones, might go to your nervous system, might go to your gut. It may go to many different places and cause illnesses and diseases. And hence, emptying your bowels, passing stools every day is a must. It's not a nice to have, or oh, it'll be so good if I could go every day. It is a must. So this is where I might talk about bowel movements more than sleep and exercise is that just the way we know sun rises every day, we don't take that for granted. Likewise, make it a uh, for granted thing that you are going to the toilet every day. When is also very important. Sorry, I need to keep an eye on time because after this, I'm going to be going and seeing some clients for consultations and treatments. So anyway, so... um. Now, people may sometimes say, oh, yes, you know, I wake up in the morning, I go to the toilet every day, but it is maybe one in the afternoon, two in the afternoon. Sometimes it might be in the evening. Sometimes it might be seven in the morning. That irregularity is not good. What Ayurveda says is that the best kind of attitude of going to the toilet is that as soon as you wake up, bear in mind, we've gone to sleep 10 p.m. We've woken up six o'clock, for example, that is eight hours and you've woken up six then yes you've brushed your teeth everything you've kind of emptied your bladder because that's the first thing that happens you will go to the loo and then after that you might have something hot to drink you might have a glass of hot water a herbal tea i'm indian i have a chai i love it um and after that probably in the first 20 30 minutes at the most 45 minutes within the first 45 minutes of waking up you should pass stools that is what is healthy stool elimination. It has to be first thing in the morning. And Ayurveda also says that it is only after you empty your bowels, you fast stools. It is only after that you feel hungry. Why? Because once the colon has emptied everything out, space has been created and that space now has been created in the stomach too. 
And do bear in mind, it is in the stomach where the digestive fire lives. And that digestive fire will need not only space, but that air movement. You know, it needs oxygen, air movement for it to become strong again. So it is only after you've passed your stools, emptied your bowels, you should feel hungry. And it is only after that, that you should eat something. Never before. So do bear in mind that it is only after passing bowels or passing your stools, you should be eating something, not before that. So make it an aim that you um, pass stools every day, first thing in the morning. And now understanding just the way we talked about pitta for sleep. Now passing stools every day is one of the most essential things for anyone suffering from vata related illnesses. And if you have got a pen and paper and I keep saying it, do write this, write this down that, um, you know, in our lives, in our phases, like, you know, our yugs, ages, there is always this kind of, you know, a tendency towards certain illnesses and disease. You know, they come and go as waves. And I tell this to all my students because I'm teaching that we may not see that change now, but give it another six, seven years approximately, two or three illnesses that will become most kind of dominant where people will be trying to do anything and everything to help correct it is all memory related imbalances so things like literally memory loss not being able to focus but two very important things is dementia and alzheimer's sorry i don't mean to sound negative but unfortunately that is where we are going towards that tendency towards dementia and alzheimer's where we need to prevent our brain and our systems now to like you know, help uh, make these two systems strength, uh, strong so that later on we won't suffer from these two illnesses. And one of the best things to help with memory, focus, discipline, uh, ambition, you name it, uh, uh, of course, uh, preventing Alzheimer's, dementia, all of that is to focus on your colon. The more there is movement over here, where stools are being passed every day, there is more movement in your brain or your nervous system. So all of those illnesses you can actually prevent now by making sure that you go to the toilet every day. Very, very important. But not only that, uh, I'm sure you may already know that for people who may be suffering from conditions like any nervous system imbalances, it can be paralysis, uh, palsies, uh, fibromyalgia, motor neuron disease, uh, Parkinson's, even things like multiple sclerosis, or any two, three very important conditions where correcting constipation or making sure that bowel movements are every day um, are conditions like high blood pressure, very important, making sure you're going to the toilet every day. Second, very important thing I know people do not actually connect is people who suffer from gastric ulcers, duodenal ulcers, or heartburn, that is acid reflux. The reason why we are suffering from all of that over there is because everything is packed up over here. And it's like, your traffic jam nothing is moving down and hence every time acid is being produced over here because it cannot move down it moves upwards so anything and very uh, last important one is migraines too so if you want to correct migraines make sure that you're going to the toilet every day someone has got a question what supplement can i take to help uh, with bowel movements probably you may already know that one of the best ayurvedic supplements for that is trifala which is two capsules every evening. I will also kind of clarify that. Please do bear in mind, Trifla is not a laxative. Trifla as a herb does not work on the large intestine. Trifla as a herb works in the stomach small intestine region where the digestive fire is located and it helps to stimulate that. And through that stimulation or heat, everything gets moved out. So Trifla is one of the best herbs. Okay, so that is the second bit about uh, bowel movements, uh, stool elimination. Now, third important and uh, again, a very important essential element from today's environment, what the age that we are living in is physical activity and exercise. I, you, I'm sure you may have seen that when I do live chats, I don't sit down. I'm still stood up. In fact, even when I was teaching last week, all my one of my students like, I've never really seen you sit down and I'm like, yes, yeah, because I need, even if I'm not moving around, at least by standing, I'm helping my joints to help, you know, bring that kind of metabolic processes back into the body. I think someone has got on the question, how to treat loose tools, but not diarrhea. 
one uh now that is excess heat in the body and if you can please message me i will let you know the answer for that because over there looks like there is too much heat you need to do all cooling bits like taking buttermilk three very simple things are daily intake of buttermilk coconut water and cumin water so these three things will really help to get rid of uh loose stools or diarrhea or even um liquid stools so for all of that these three things are good okay so now coming to physical activity do bear in mind that as time is going along unfortunately we as human um you, uh, how can i say species we are getting lazier and lazier by the day fortunately or unfortunately yes on one hand technology helps us a lot but unfortunately on the other hand it is making our physical body so lazy just not the physical body technology is also making our brain and mind really lazy and you will see that nowadays we have got autocorrect on our text messages if i were to ask any of you do you know what your partner's um mobile number is what your son's mobile number is or what your best friend's mobile number is or what someone's home address is the answer for all of this is going to be no because everything is saved up there you know all that we need to do is just tap a few things and things are there and it's even like when you have to drive when you have to do things we are so dependent on the phone that is in front of me or technology unfortunately it is just not the physical side it is even our mind or brain that is getting lazier by the day but forget the mind side we shall come to that afterwards but at least a physical aspect um how can i put this oh yes you will see that um we are getting lazy physically too from the point of view that everything is at hand you know it's like once upon a time many thousands of years ago hundreds of years ago we did not have elevator elevators no lifts no cars no bicycles no bikes um no phones no switches no um washing machine no no dishwasher nothing that means we did everything by physical hand and we were always physically active and yes from that point of view when people used to say yes we need to have three meals per day it made sense because we were active so much then that we needed that energy those calories and that sustenance and that support but nowadays forget about even just um at home but even your work has come home because all of us not all of us because i try to go to work every day as much as i can so i make it a point that i leave my house at least once during the day if it is not for work i will at least go for a 15 20 minute walk even if i can't do that i'll just go out till the road and come back so i try my best to leave home every day so so the reason i'm saying that is because people are also working from home and unfortunately we are all sat for 8 hours 9 hours every day and that is not good for the body do bear in mind that when we do that when we have a kind of physically more sedentary it's the body starts producing the wrong kind of hormones and which may also then lead towards aging so the other really important thing for in terms of everyday optimal health and anti aging and long life is physical activity movement now what happens when you're doing this physical activity or movement first of all do bear in mind that um uh, it's not just what i say it is modern medicine that says but this is something that ayurveda talked about thousands of years ago is that when we are physically act active at least for 20 minutes every day then whatever there is a not so good hormone in the body called as cortisol you know so body actually helps to get rid of that cortisol getting rid of that cortisol on a regular basis is very very important because that particular so let's say chemical substance in the body can be the cause of many different illnesses and diseases so that's the first thing you know even if this 15 minutes of movement activity on a regular basis getting rid of cortisol but the other thing now more ayurvedically when we are physically active we are working through our marma points that is energy points the more the joints are Physi uh, physically moved or active these marmas open up and as i and i'm sure many of you already know that the way i describe marma points of course these are points where a lot of nadis or connections or channels are coming together so imagine when you're looking into the joint the joint is such where two bones have come together it's just not the bones you've got your arteries going up you know so that kind of circulation of arteries veins nerves but along with that it is also 
tendons, ligaments. So it is a very important junction of all essential tissues. So the way I look into a marma point where I live out here in UK and of course many other countries, we've got something called as roundabouts. So when we say roundabouts, you know, it's like you've got all these roads coming into that area and then the cars need to wait before they get onto the roundabout. And I usually say that our energy points are like those roundabouts. Imagine if a car gets broken down in the roundabout, you know, all those roads also get blocked. Same thing is with our joints or marma points. If there is blockage of energy over there, you will just not see that uh, pathology or illness in the joint. It will start affecting everything going backwards or forwards. That means it will affect everything. So physical activity is just not about, it's of course it is physical movement, but it's not just always about losing weight, but actually getting rid of what is called as lactic acid from the body, making sure that oxygen transport, if you want to call it, you know, like, um, supply to the body is improved likewise blood supply is improved the toxins are drained out all of this is possible only when we are physically active so we are actually working through the marma points too so when we are physically active bear in mind we're getting rid of those cortisols we are helping prana circulation in the body but then along with that the body also produces these happy hormones just like the way sleep is so it is a combination of all of it together physical movement physical activity is really good so because i come from that yoga related background i would say making sure that you do at least 12 sets of sun salutations every day and i'm grinning about it because if you were to do 12 sets of sun salutations every day which might take 10 minutes 15 minutes 20 minutes doesn't matter but did you know that when you do it correctly it is almost it is equal to almost running two or three miles every day so imagine you walking two three miles or running two three miles it equates to that because the way the chakras get stimulated or along with that the way the nervous system gets stimulated is very very different and it works on all the different endocrine systems too so physical activity at least for 15 20 minutes every day even if it means you're just going out for a walk that is also much better I do get clients saying, oh yeah, but I walk to work for 15, 20 minutes to the train station and back. And I tell them that is not the kind of physical activity I'm looking for. Yes, it is good, but that kind of physical activity includes stress. So yes, I'm getting ready to go to work and I've looked at the time. Oh, I'm three minutes late to t uh, catch that train and I'm that stressful running to the train station doesn't help. So the kind of physical movement activity that I'm talking about is if you're going to be going for a walk, you have to leave your home, your front door for that walk and you have to come back home. Or if you're at home, you're spending those 20 minutes just focusing on yourself, exercising. So how does physical exercise help? Just the way I said, you know, sleep will help to get rid of excess heat, pitta from the body. Bowel movements, uh, passing stools every day will help to get rid of that dryness or vata from the body. Likewise, physical activity also then helps to get rid of that excess kapha any congestion, fluid retention, anything of that kind also from the body. But do bear in mind, very important when I talk about physical activity is you need to sweat on a daily regular basis because that is one other way where body is releasing heat or getting rid of toxins. So one thing, when you, once you go away today, please go and ask at least five, six people, how much do you sweat every day? When was the last time that you really sweated a lot? And what is it? First of all, the answer will be, oh no, I can't remember the last time when I actually properly sweated, when I exercised, did physical activity or whatever. Or the other answer that many people may give is that, um, uh, oh yes, yes, I do sweat, but I sweat when I sleep at night. And that night sweats, please put that note down, is not good. It is not good because remember I talked about sleep. That means when we are sleeping, the liver needs to be active. That means we need to be completely calmed down, cooled off. But if you're sl uh, sweating at night, that is another, if you want to call it, uh, how can I say, a uh, sign that you need to focus on to correct it. If you're sweating at night, which shows that during the daytime you have accumulated so much heat that the body did not get that opportunity or chance to sweat it out during the day. And because it is only at night time it is happening, it is taking that opportunity to do it and it is not good because people who suffer from night sweats they will always be exhausted and tired next day because 
during the night when the body needed to be resting, the body was spending that time and energy in sweating it all out. So during the day is very important to sweat. So there is a question. It's so how to sweat, especially in today's weather. Any advice? It's easy. It's easy, Kiran. So very, and I'm going to just point it out because it was because of him. And he asked me in the class, what are the three essential pillars I've forgotten? So based on that is today's live chat. So it is easy to sweat if you want to. And I tell people when, even if you have to exercise for 10, 15 minutes, make sure that you're layered up, you know, as many layers of clothing start from a little, me being a woman, I'll wear a tank top inside, another top, another top, then maybe another two, three layers on top. And through that, when you start even jogging in a place, exercising, you will feel warm, hot, you will start sweating. So sweating actually is easy because there are ways of doing it. And maybe I might do another live chat for that, for you to know ways of sweating it out. But coming back to that point again, sweating it out is very important because that is how the body is getting rid of all that excess inflammation, heat, and also, how can I say, uh, emotional anger, emotional heat, because that is where we are collecting a lot. So, so when you're going to be doing a physical activity exercise, do bear in mind just, yes, 15 minutes of walk out there is great because you've taken that fresh oxygen in, but make sure that it is a brisk walk, even if not anywhere, even if it's tiny bit in your armpits, in your palms, uh, foot soles, sometimes, you know, people sweat around the tummy region behind the back, even if there's small areas that you can feel that heat, warmth or sweating, you need to celebrate yourself that day because you've actually gotten rid of that much toxins from the body. Otherwise, imagine if you don't sweat, how much toxin you're carrying with it every day, with yourselves every day. So same thing with your stools and sweating. The best way I can explain is when you have to go uphill and you're carrying, what, 10 kilograms of bag on your back. And you may not realize it on a daily basis, but we are carrying that much more weight with ourselves every day. If you don't pass stools every day or if you don't sweat, the more you sweat it out, you feel light. The more you sweat it out, you feel happy. Likewise with stool elimination too. I need to look. Okay, my time is up now because uh, after this, I need to go work. So yeah, so those are the three important kind of pillars, essential pillars for optimal health and long term. So it is easy. Do bear in mind, you just need to put that time aside for those eight hours of sleep at night, uh, starting 10 p.m. Only 10, 15 minutes, uh, very quickly coming back to exercises. Maybe I might do a chat on a live chat for you to know how it is done, but joint movements, just do your joint movements every day. Even through that, you will see, how can I say a big change in the body and yes, stool elimination on a regular basis. So I think someone must have had a question. So is sauna good? Yes. R rather than sauna, I would say steam. I think it is steam. You know, that wet heat is much better so that the body doesn't dry out. If you do want to go for a sauna, then make sure that you have applied oil to the skin because then that oil becomes like that protective layer. And then if you were to go both for steam and sauna only for a short period of time, that itself is also really good. Okay, so I shall stop here and I will hopefully see you all again soon, sometime very soon again. And uh, yeah, have a great day on your side. Sorry, I need to run now. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Have a great day. And if you do have any questions, please do send me a message. Take care. Thank you. Bye.